thank you, Undone, for blessing us this morning with your gifts and talents and singing to us this morning. Turn to the Bible, if you will, to John chapter 19. The title of my message this morning is Showing Our Love to Mom. Showing Our Love to Mom. John 19, verse 26. Very special moment in the life of Jesus on two accounts. The first account is he's dying on the cross. He's dying for our sins up on Calvary's cross. But even though that whole scene is taking place, in the Bible, Jesus pauses for a moment. John chapter 19, verse 26, in this passage of Scripture, shows us the heart of the Son of God. He says, when Jesus therefore saw his mother, that's his earthly mother, and the disciple standing by whom he loved, that was speaking of John, and he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her unto his own home. May God's blessing be upon his word this morning. If you're not careful, you kind of glaze over that passage of Scripture, but there's a lot of important uh, thoughts and a message in this. Here, like I said, Jesus Christ is hanging upon a cross, dying for the sins of the world. And yet in this beautiful moment while he hangs there, suspended between heaven and earth, he pauses and he says to John, John, I want you to take care of my mom. Well, some of you say, well, that, why is that so important? Well, the reason is, remember, they had no social security. They had no retirement. There was no provisions. If a mother was left without a son to provide for her, then she was homeless. She was abandoned and most likely could die. But here Jesus is transferring his, as the oldest son, responsibility over to John. Now I want us also to note one thing. John is the author of the Gospel of John. 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, but most important, he is the author of Revelation. John lived to be the oldest of the disciples. Now, we don't know how long Mary lived, but some people say, well, why didn't he pass on that responsibility to Peter? Or why didn't he pass it on to one of his other brothers? Only God can answer all those questions. But one thing we do know, that John was around the longest. And I believe that he and Jesus' wisdom knew that John would be there to take care of his mom. My point, guys, a lot of my message this morning is directed to us. We have a responsibility to take care of the women that God has brought into our lives, especially our moms, as long as they're alive. So let me say, first of all, Happy Mother's Day. To all our moms and all our moms to be, none of us would be here without you. Amen? Amen. Was it for mom, we wouldn't be here. So thank God for our mothers. In our scripture this morning, I think we have the witness of Jesus saying moms are important. If your mom is alive today, regardless of your age or regardless of her age, you can show her your love in these ways that I want to give you. Now, men, let me just say, this will work for your wives as well. All right? What I'm giving you may be directed to her mom, but they will work in direction to the wife that you may have. So let me give it to you. Number one, show mom your love by telling her. Show mom your love by telling her, especially to all you wonderful young men who have learned from some of us other wonderful old men who have the philosophy, I don't have to say I love you, you should know it already. Wives, moms, if you've got someone in your life that says that to you, just slap them right now. You have special dispensation, okay? Just a pop them. No, just kidding. And, and, and you know it may be true. 
But I, I, I want to say something to you. Moms need to hear those words, I love you. Wives, you need to hear those words. So we can show mom our love by telling her. There's an article in Dear Abby that I want to read to you this morning that celebrates our mom. And I, it, it, it's a beautiful one. I've read it to you before. But it starts like this. It's a man. He says, I listed shortly after Pearl Harbor. 36 days later, I was on my way to the, Phyllis, uh, the uh, Philippines en route. The Philippines fell to the Japanese, and we were rerouted to Australia. Eleven days after that, we landed. I met the most beautiful girl in the world. On our first date, I told her that I was going to marry her. I did. Eighteen, more, eighteen months later, while on a ten-day R&R &R leave from New Guinea, and painfully, after more than 57 years of marriage, and two children later, my beloved Mary died five days before last Christmas. Although we agreed that our ashes were to be scattered over the mountains that we loved, I found that I could not part with hers. While Mary was alive, she would frequently say, you don't know how much that I love you. And I'd always reply, likewise. I never said, I love you. Now her ashes are on my dresser, where I tell her several times a day how much that I love her, but, but it's too late. Although I wrote her poetry and I, I could not bring myself to those three words that I knew that she wanted to hear. As my dearest was dying and we thought she was comatose, I told her, there aren't enough words to tell you how much that I love you, dear. A few hours later, before she spoke her last words, she looked at me with a gentle smile and said, not enough words, and she died. The reason I'm writing this to you is that most men like myself struggle with expressing their true feelings while their loved ones are alive. I don't know why, but many of men are reluctant to express and say those three words. Missing my Mary, I love you, in Colorado. Men, our spouses need to hear it. Our children need to hear it. And our mothers need to hear it. Some men would say, I, I, I'm just not turned that way. Well, men, maybe you need to be turned around. I'm just not comfortable. Then be uncomfortable. Speak. Say it. Say it often. I love you. Number two, show your mom your love by touch. When was the last time that you gave your mom a big hug? without her asking for it, or a kiss on the cheek, or, or, or any other type of touching that would connect you to your mom to let her know that you loved her. Well, let me say this. She was the first person who ever touched you. She wrapped you in her arms. She made you the first priority. She cuddled you. She stroked your head. She rubbed your feet. She held your little cheeks against her. She gave you a hand of grasp. In love, she did all these things, including grooming you with that little wicky hanky that washed a lot of stuff off your face. Yeah. Mom was always touching you. And when you were little, she said, give me sugar. You'd poke her up the little lips, and maybe they were wet, sloppy with food or dirt and grime. You kissed her, and she said, thank you. What's my point? My point is mom was constantly touching you. And yes, when you got married, and she had to hand you off to another. I want to say she still deserves your touch. But like most moms, this Mother Day, your, your hug, your kiss on her cheek would be more to her than all the boxes of candy, all the flowers in the whole wide world. She needs your touch. Number three, show your mom by being patient. <laughs> yeah, as we get older, ladies and gentlemen, show your mom by being patient. And may I say, moms have an incredible job to do, by the way. I recognize that. I've watched my own wife. I've watched my mother and how they always did what they did. And you know the thing about this? 
They do it without pay. You know, us guys, when we do stuff, we're looking, you know, I want my paycheck. You know, we go to work, we work hard. Yeah, we want that paycheck. But you know, moms are special. They too work very, very hard. No position. No position. I'm not trying to just get points. No, guys, I'm, I'm talking to you from the heart. But there's no business in the world that compares to the emotional and spiritual commitment that a lady makes in motherhood. Well, let me share another great illustration. It's called No Occupation. She rises up at the break of day, and though her task, she races. She cooks the meals as best she may and scrubs the children's faces. While school books, lunches, homework too, all need to be considered, and yet the census man, when he took it, said she had no occupation. When breakfast dishes are all done, she bakes a pudding, maybe. She cleans the room up one by one with one eye watching the baby. The mending pile she then attacks by way of variation, and yet the census man still insists she has no occupation. She irons for a little while, then presses pants for daddy. She welcomes with cheery smile, returning glasses and laddie. A hearty dinner next she cooks, no time for relaxation. And yet the census man always insists, mom has no occupation. Don't ever make the mistake, guys, of asking a woman, uh, especially one, do you work or do you just stay at home? <laughs> the only thing that I can think any uh, worse than that is uh, asking a lady when she's due, especially when you don't know that she's due and she's not really due. Yeah, you, those are two things that I've learned in time. You just don't, you just don't say it, all right? And listen to me, teens and young adults. It would be unfair for you to be more kind, more considerate, and here it is, and more patient with your friends and your friends' mothers than you are your own mother. Huh? It would be a shame that we would be more honorable, more patient with all the ups and downs of our lady friends and guy friends and even their parents than we are our own mommy. Many ladies today, let me say, have to work a full-time job. Not only to be a wife and a mother. Here, here's a, another point. In spite of all that she does, and you know we often get impatient with her, you know, wh why do we take things out? You know, Mom, you know, Mom, you know I wanted to wear that dress uh, uh, tomorrow? You know, and yet it's still in the dirty clothes pile. Huh? Doesn't the washing machine work for uh, uh, kids as well as it does for Mom? Or sons, Mom, you know I like those cookies. How come there isn't any in here? You know, you went to the grocery store. Why didn't you get my cookies? Well, if you can drive, why don't you drive and get your own cookies? You know, help them out. Love Mom patiently. Just because Mom has spoiled you rotten, intended to your every needs, there is no, no reason why you should not be patient with her. Dobson, in his program, when he had a uh, radio program focused on the family, he read a letter of an 80-year-old woman on her birthday. And it's addressed this. It's to all my children. The mom writes, I suppose my upcoming birthday started me and my thoughts thinking about those lines that this is a good time to tell what I truly want for my children, and, and yet I've not often had a time to share it. This mom says, I, I want the intangibles. I would like you to come and sit with me, and for you to be relaxed, not stiff, not looking at your watch, making me feel like you don't have enough time. We need to talk, or we just could be silent. I just would like you to be together with me. I need your patience when I don't hear you for the first time. I know I'm tiresome and you always have to repeat what you're saying, but sometimes I must ask you to repeat and I'm, I'm sorry. I need your patience when I think too much about the past, 
with my slowness and my set and my ways. I want you to be tolerant with me uh, with the years that have done to me physically. Please understand about my personal habits. I know I spill things. I lose things. I get unduly excited when I try to figure out my bank statement. And I, and I can remember what time uh, to take my medicine, but sometimes I don't. Sometimes I've already taken it. I know. I know, son. I know, daughter. I, Mom takes too many naps nowadays. But sometimes I sleep to pass the loneliness of the day. Well, there you have it, son, daughter. That's what Mom wants, the intangibles, time, patience and understanding. Those are priceless gifts that you could give me. Finally, I'd just like to share a scripture with you from the Apostle Paul. When you look at me and with those eyes saying, Mom, boy, you're asking a whole lot. Time, patience, and understanding. But, but let me just share with you what Paul said. He said, I can do all things through Christ Jesus which strengthen me. I, I know you know that. It's a wonderful feeling to know that his eye is up on the sparrow, and I know that God cares for me. Well, you know what, my children? I guess getting old isn't so bad after all. Love, Mom. Number four, show your mom love by paying attention. Now, mothers listen to you as you poured your heart out. She was sympathetic. She gave you her ear always, regardless of what time of the day it was. You knew that mom was always willing to listen to everything that you had to say. There's something about paying attention to mom nowadays when she has a tendency to want to talk to you. Just remember all the times that she was willing to pick up the phone and listen and listen and listen. There was a documentary a few years ago about men going to execution for capital punishment. Now, the interview took place, they interviewed a, a bunch of these men's moms. And inevitably, these, these moms had this one thing to say about their sadistic, cold-hearted, murderous son. She would always say, I remember him as being such a good boy. Huh? And you'd like to say back to her, but mom, this man brutally murdered 37 individuals. Yet mom would always come back. But I love him because he's my boy. Only a mother could have that kind of feelings. And so we, we and ourselves need to pay attention to mom. She listens. She listened to your music. She listened to all your issues. She listened to your aches and your pains and your broken heart and your trouble and whatever you were going through. It's payback time. Now's the time to listen to mom. Number five, show mom your love by being thankful. There was an elementary teacher that gave her class an assignment about magnets. And she showed how the metal objects uh, could attract things and these magnets could pick up things off of the, the, the desk, and the students were just mesmerized by this magnet being able to lift these things like magic without any strings, pick it straight up. And at the end of the, the session, the teacher passed out a test, and on that test she asked to uh, give them uh, using six letters, using the word M that picks up things. Two-thirds of the class wrote mother, not back then. Show mom by being thankful. Listen, mom needs a sincere thanks. Not just today, but give her a general I thank you often. Number six, show mom your love abundantly. There's nothing too good for mom. We can never repay her. Now, let me just add that little copy out there. The grandmothers are included, okay? I, I meant to say that at the beginning. But grandmothers, because they do a lot also, all right? So we can never repay them. 
but we ought to die trying, let me just say that. Many times, mom didn't spend on herself unless all your needs were met first. She could have easily done without, and, and let me just say, now it's time, if your mom is alive, your grandma is alive, now's the time to spend on them. Mom gave up so many opportunities so that you can have opportunities. I, I've got a math question. I know you said, preacher, it's Sunday morning. I don't, don't give me, yeah, well, I'm going to give you an algebra question. All right? So you've got to answer this in a fraction. If there are six people at the family table and there's one pecan pie or pecan, whatever you want to say, uh, there is simple math to take care of how you can feed six people, right? But, but, but that's not a mother's math. Let me let's say that. If there's that many people at the table and there's only one pie, and that would mean if you're going to use the math, every people, uh, every person, six people would get one sixth of the pie. That's not the solution for mom. Mom would divide the pie into fifths. Why is that? Because mom was always full. She was always full. Mom always took care of everything. She took care of our needs. And so that's why she deserves our abundance of love. Finally, number seven, show mom your love by honoring her. Not just today, but every day. For those of us that have lost our moms recently, or for those of us that it's been a long time, would you not want to honor them today? Would you not like one more opportunity to say for all the times that you did, Mom, I love you? Would you not like the opportunity to say, Mom, what can I do for you today? Oh, wouldn't you just love to walk up and give your mom a big old sloppy whip kiss on her cheek once again? I'm sure most of you, if you're like me and my brother today, you like one more opportunity. Well, this is not my message, but let me just say this to you. For those of us that have lost our mom, there's coming a day that I'll have eternity to give her sloppy wet kisses and give her hugs and tell her I love her and tell her I thank you and I appreciate you for all eternity. See, if you're a Christian today and your mom was a Christian today, we have hope of eternity. Amen? We have hope of being able to give her that love once again. Exodus chapter 20, verse 12 says this, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. I had one mom tell me one time, because I was talking about that, and I said, you know, it is the only commandment that comes with a promise. But why is that? Why is it a, a commandment that says to us, if we honor our parents, uh, we honor our moms that our days may be long upon this earth. And this mom said, well, this, I brought you into this world, and I'll take you out. <laughs> mom's not going to take you out of this earth if you love her, right? That's where you get that promise. All right. I'm just kidding. All right. Don't go out there. All right. But let me say this. This honor thing. It's binding as long as your mother lives. And if the husband is the head of the home, then the mother is the heart. Don't ever break her heart. You might be here this morning thinking, but pastor, my mom wasn't honorable. Well, I just want to say to you, this scripture doesn't say anything about qualifications. It just simply says to honor your mother. By the way, that one built-in Ten Commandment is there for each and every one of us today. Now, let me close with, with this story that I know I've shared with you again uh, before, but let me let me give it to you. It's, it's, it's when God, the title of it is When God Created Mothers. Here it is. Uh, when the good Lord created mothers, he was into his sixth day of overtime. And when the angel appeared, he said, you're doing a lot of things, you're doing a lot fiddling around, God, with this one. And God replied, have you seen the specs, specifications on, on this order for a mother? The angel looked at God and said, yeah, but only you can do that. 
God said she has to be completely washable, but not with plastic. Mom must have 180 movable parts, all replaceable. She must run on black coffee and leftovers, have a lap that disappears when she stands up, a kiss that can be carrying anything from a broken leg to a disappointed love affair, in a six pair of hands. The angel looked at God and said, wow, six pairs of hands, no way. It's not the hand, God said, that's causing me the problem. It's the three pairs of eyes that a mother must have. One pair that sees through closed doors when she asks, what are you kids doing in there? And when she knows already. And another pair in the back of her head that sees what she shouldn't, but what she needs to know, of course. And the ones that are in front as she looks at a child, as he acts goofy and says, I don't understand what you're doing, but I love you anyway. Without so much as uttering a word, I'm so close to creating something so close to myself, God said. Already, I have one who heals herself when she is sick. She can feed a family of six pounds, or she can feed a family of six on one pound of hamburger and get a nine-year-old to stand up under a shower. Not only can she think, she can reason, and she can compromise. Finally, the angel bent over and ran his finger across the cheek of the mother. God, there's, there's a leak. I told you you were trying to put too much into this model of a mother. God looked at the angel and said, that, that's not a leak. It's called a tear. Well, the angel said, what's that for? And the Lord replied, it's for many things. It could be a tear of joy. It could be a tear a tear of sadness. It could be a tear of pain. It could be a tear of loneliness. Or it could be a tear of mother's pride. You're a genius, shouted the angel. With a somber look on his face, God said, I didn't put it there. It's a mom thing. How about a hand for our moms, past and present, this morning as you stand? Amen. Let's give our hands.